Card Games TV One podcast. Uh, two player decks, you know, the idea of, you know, um, tutorial decks or decks to learn, right? Decks for beginners, right? Because once you're a beginner and you start playing the game, right, you, you want, you need to learn the basics. So when it comes to learning the basics of any games, uh, starter decks are good because that's the whole point of them is to teach you the basics of the game so you can start playing the game. The thing that sucks with starter decks is that they typically, after you learn how to play the game, you realize <laughs> the deck's not that good. Um, and then, of course, the idea is that you're supposed to go get packs and stuff like that and try to improve the starter deck or just build a whole new deck. But it kind of sucks that if the product itself, which is the important thing for me, if the product itself is not cheap enough for, um, it's not cheap enough for you to justify buying it playing with it like one or two times just to get the hang of the game and then be like all right I don't, i'm not gonna play this deck <laughs> i'd rather build my own or i'd rather <clears throat> buy something better so by default these products tend to be a waste of money which is why it's better when it's cheaper now let's say there's a two-player set so you can learn how to play the game and it's a 50 dollars set you know 50 dollar product it's like well that's a little bit too much <laughs> right just for you to you know uh start off like 50 bucks to just to learn to play the game i'd rather pay 50 spend 50 bucks and get a real good deck right i'd rather build a good deck with 50 50 cards i mean 50 bucks like for example you can get three structure decks which already is a deck with a strategy and everything right all 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 thought out and then with the remaining 20 bucks you know, you can get singles, you can get staples and stuff, right? And improve the deck that way. So for 50 bucks and three starter decks, you're better off that way. When it comes to building a deck and then try to learn the, the game that way. Now, that's if you want to put in that effort. Now, starter decks, yes, they could always be better. For me, I like the idea of the what Magic does, the dual decks, which are essentially kind of like two stru structure decks in one. And the idea is you learn to play the game with these decks and these decks themselves can be improved upon can be made better so you don't so it's not a waste of money because you don't end up buying them learn how to play the game and then be like all right well i don't want to play this no more no it, it, a lot of times that ends up being your main deck your fun deck after you start becoming competitive and start trying to follow the meta you still go back to the that deck that you started off with which is nice but most starter decks most people don't go back to it like, I started off with the old Dark Magician uh, starter deck when the game first came out. And there's some nostalgia for me when it comes to that deck. But I don't want to play that deck again. <laughs> I don't run that Dark Magician deck. You know, there are some new Dark Magician cards now that I can use. I could build a Dark Magician deck. But it definitely wouldn't be like that old one. Because that was just to get me started to get me into the game, to teach me the basic rules of the game so that way when newer, better stuff came out, you know, I would know what to play, what's worth it. Right now, I'm playing My Hero Academia, you know, building decks, learning it, proxying, which is the cheapest way, that's the main thing. If you want to learn something, I recommend, especially if you're the type of person that's like, I want to learn how to play the game, but I don't want to use a starter deck. I want to use like one of these cool meta decks Okay, then proxy it. Proxy the meta decks. And that's the thing. If you're the type of person, if you're a player who wants to teach people to play, and you want to save some money, then proxy. Like proxy, make some 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 decks that you proxy, right? <clears throat> like with bonfire, you know, the expensive card, you know, stuff like that. And then teach people that way. That's fine. That's the thing. We as players, we can do whatever we want. Because, again, it's just a game. And the way we play this game is with cards that have images on them right pieces of paper with pictures on them I, I i'm printing proxies right now i just cut out some proxies for the my hero academia game so i can test out the cards to see if they're worth buying or not because some of the cards are expensive but i proxy them to see if they're worth even even consider buying them right now i can afford anything so it's not that big of a deal for me money wise i could afford it i could afford to drop a thousand dollars on a play set of something or just a whole entire deck 
but I don't want to. Like, <clears throat> I'd rather save the money, right? I'd rather spread it out and use it on multiple things. Plus, I play multiple card games, so I'd rather spend, instead of spending $1,000 on one game, I'd rather spread out that $1,000 throughout well, you know, all the games that I play. Especially if I need new sleeves and deck boxes, that's another mass. A lot goes into it. So, I'd rather spread out my money. But that's the thing, it's just about being logical, being a you know, budget player, you know, being good with money, money management, all that good stuff. And again, you should be testing and proxying anything you're interested in buying, especially if it's expensive. And truly, truly figure out, is it worth it? Can you play without it? Do you really need it? Blah, blah, blah. A lot of people think they do, but they only think that because they see videos of people using the cards. So they think, oh, I have to use it too. Because that makes the deck consistent, blah, blah, blah. It's like, huh? There are other ways to make the deck consistent. And if you, and the, and the funny thing is, if you, if you draw the card you need to do your little wombo combo, you don't really need Monfire if, you're, if you automatically draw that one star, right? And then do that little one star combo, whatever it is. I gotta eventually look a video and see what the combo is, what, what's the big hype on Bonfire, because to me it's just like, okay, it's a search card, an expensive one at the end, it's like, well, I don't care, because it doesn't search what I want it to search, it searches out something else that other people want it to search, like, alright, cool, um, <clears throat> so to me, it's not a must-have or a card that I need, so, you know, like I said, you know, theme decks, dual decks, uh, you know, are two-player decks concept has always been a good concept because this is a two-player game you don't play this game by yourself so a individual starter deck where you only have one deck and you're expected to go use that one deck against other people who have decks unless somebody else bought a starter deck so you can so they can you know play with you and you know and they can teach you right you can learn the game that way <clears throat> unless that happens more likely you got to start a deck because you wanted a deck to start playing the game with thinking that oh this will Help me get started and i could go to my locals and play with all those other people that play the game but nope the starter deck won't be that good against those decks you won't be able to learn because you're gonna be your opponent's gonna put up five negates and it's like well i can't you're gonna negate everything i play so it's hard for me to learn the game all i'm gonna learn is is how to lose you know the point of learning to play a game is to learn how to win losing <laughs> Losing happens because you made a bad decision. Losing happens because you did nothing. Losing happens because your opponent is a better player. Losing happens because you didn't have the right card at the right time. You know, iron Jesus, all that stuff. So losing is easy. Winning is hard. Which means you have to learn to win. Not necessarily learn to lose because lose is easy. So you have to learn to win. So, yeah, a lot of these starter decks are not really great to teach you to learn to win. <clears throat> because to, to, to learn to win means you need to learn what other decks do and then how to beat them if somebody puts up five negates how do you beat it how do you deal with it does your starter deck come with with lava glum kaiju's sphere mode uh dark ruler no more uh does it even come with board wipes like regeki dark hole you know lightning vortex at least lightning storm you know the list goes on it's like you know does your <clears throat> does the starter deck have that if the starter deck doesn't have you know those generic types of cards like dark hole Monster Reborn, Change of Heart, things like that that will teach you the, the idea of taking your opponent's monster, bringing back a monster from your opponent's graveyard, or just bringing back a monster from your graveyard, or tributing your monster to, to summon a monster, or, you know, tribute summon your own monster, right? The, the level system, right? Anything, any 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 five star, six star, you got to tribute one monster. Any seven or higher, you got to tribute two monsters. Some monsters require three tributes, you know, that kind of stuff. So... And then there's the different summoning mechanics so you gotta you gotta start somewhere right and it'd be a good idea to yeah have products that when you, when, you, when you buy it it works really good as is it has enough uh basic outs that's the main thing because the way we play the game in general is the idea of outing your opponent does something and you need something to beat that something so your opponent you know puts up a card that can't be destroyed by battle, well, you're not going to summon mon strong monsters and attack it and beat it. You're going to need something that can destroy it by a card effect. So you're going to need something like a Regeki, right? You're going to need something <clears throat> that can destroy something that can't be destroyed by battle, right? 
So you need something that can destroy it, at least by card effects. And the list goes on. So it's like you gotta you gotta make sure that these sets come with those options. You know, it's like here's something strong. This thing can't die by battle. But the other starter deck has a card that or cards that can destroy the card by card effect. So that's how you learn how to beat something that can't die by battle. <clears throat> and vice versa. You can make something that can't be destroyed by card effect. So then they have to kill it by battle. And this is how you teach people how to play the game. You know, because it's all about building boards, breaking boards. Building boards, breaking boards, and reducing your points at points to zero. It's a simple, straightforward game, but a lot of players try to make it complicated because they, you know, they want to feel high and mighty and feel like, you know, they're like a 12th level intellect or something like they're Albert Einstein of card of Yu-Gi-Oh or something or some card game. So they overcomplicate the explanation of the game or complicate what the game is. And it's like, no, you're talking about competitive play and competitive play. Y'all try to make things more complicated. Y'all play combos, which makes things more complicated. And then y'all use hand traps to try to interrupt these combos. So you make the game more complicated. Y'all make the game complicated as players. And it's not the game itself that's complicated. That's why these starter decks and these two-player decks are simple. Because the game is simple. Players, us, we make it more complicated. So it goes back to us of what we do. If we want players to play this game, we want to get people to learn the game and make it easy and stuff like that, then we're supposed to be the ones to do that. Stop expecting Konami to do it. Because the funny thing is Konami does it. They give us products, right? They give us stuff that we can use that are simple. But we want to overcomplicate it. We'll see the two-player set and be like, wait, but this doesn't have this summoning mechanic and this and that. It doesn't have this combo. This doesn't have that. Like, where's the starter? Where's where's the extender? Where's this? Yeah, oh yeah, all this competitive, all this a 500 IQ type of mentality, mindset that a lot of these competitive players have. And they try to apply it to something that's made for new players that don't have that mindset, that don't play competitively, not yet. And a lot of times they shouldn't even have to because one is probably just going to be a hobby. The two is just for fun. It's a trading card game. Think about the fact that a lot of people don't trade for cards. They buy and they buy and sell cards. Then they complain, oh, these cards are expensive. Then trade for it. You want bonfire? Trade for bonfire. Most somebody's long for bonfire. You don't got to pay money for it. Right? But a lot of y'all complain about prices, but y'all the reason the prices exist in the first place. Because y'all want something that y'all really don't need. Just like, yeah, if you're a new player, you don't need these two player sets, these starter decks. So whenever a starter deck or a structure deck comes out, you know, you don't need to pay attention. I barely pay attention. I don't know what the new structure deck, starter decks, I don't even know what this two player uh, set has in it specifically. I just hear that a lot of people are complaining about it. And the funny thing is the ones who are complaining are people who already play the game, who already have decks, who, you know, who play on Dueling Book and, and, and Edo Pro and Duel Masters and watch a whole bunch of YouTube. It's like, y'all, this product's not for y'all. This product's for somebody who doesn't know the game at all. Who probably just heard about it. But y'all want to cry and complain about something that y'all have nothing to do with. Right? It, it's not for you. Right? It's like dudes complaining about, you know... A certain shade of uh, of lipstick or something. It's like, but you guys don't wear makeup, so or lipsticks. Why are you complaining about something you don't use? Something that has has nothing to do with you. That's the problem. Is that everybody? It's obvious that a lot of these players try to make things about themselves. They're narcissists. They're egotistical, self centered. They think that everything has to be competitive. Everything is for the competitive scene, not casual, not rogue, not for fun, not a hobby. And that's why I even have people arguing with me like, oh, this is an investment. You invest in this game. Uh, no, uh, this is a hobby and it's for you to sp spend your leftover money, your pocket money, money you're, you're willing to waste. This is a hobby. It's meant the point of a hobby is you waste money for the hobby because the hobby is more important than the money. Money don't matter. It's the hobby that matters. It's the enjoyment of the hobby. <clears throat> it gives you something to do, something you like to do. If you're complaining that you don't like spending money on your hobby because you're not getting a return on your investment. It's not an investment. You want to invest, go into the stock market, start a business, invest in real estate if you want to invest. Those are investments. Card games are not investments. Just, it's just a game. 
Y'all are trying to make it into something that's not. Y'all trying to make it into, uh, you know, how am I supposed to pay my bills, man? It's either bonfire or pay my rent. Like, uh, no, pay your rent. You don't need bonfire, but you do need a roof over your head. So pay your rent. Stop being stupid. Stop being childish. And that's the thing. The average Yu-Gi-Oh player or card game player is 20 plus. So it makes no sense for anyone to be complaining about the price of cards because y'all can afford it. And if y'all can't afford it, well, that's a you problem. And you should get your money up. And you should also consider maybe not buying any of these expensive cards because clearly they're not for you. If you can't afford them, you're not supposed to have them. That's just how that works. There's a reason why most of y'all can't fly and don't have superpowers because you're not supposed to have them. That's why. You might want superpowers, but you're not entitled to them. You're not destined to have them, which is why you don't. So it's just like you don't have, you can't afford bonfire. You're not supposed to have bonfire. Go play something else that you can't afford. Because what you can't afford is what you're supposed to have. It's what you deserve. You don't deserve anything above your capabilities. Right? Just, just basic logic. So there's this thing here that I'm trying to show. That there's this anthologies. It's a box that has eight decks in it. So that's a really good product that Magic has. And they're all themed. They're all based off of the Planeswalkers. You know, the certain characters. And it comes with a deck box. You open up the deck box, then there's a deck in there. You sleeve them up, put them back in the deck box, and then now you have eight decks that you can take turns playing and learning, and you know. And of course, they're gonna have good cards, and the card synergizes with the with the you know with the theme of the decks. And that's the main thing is that you know you have eight decks you can play from, and it's worth. And let's say this is a hundred bucks. It's worth a hundred dollars to have eight good decks that work good as is not saying that they're top tier there's tier zero or anything like that. that's that's us we make things more better than what konami or any card game company makes it there that's the thing the job of these card game companies are supposed to give you something simple something basic that you can work from a platform a a template like here here's a, a here's a fire king's structure deck have fun do whatever y'all want with it that's what's supposed to happen they give us stuff and then we do whatever we do with it because it's our game, our hobby. So it's it's our fault. 90% of the problems in card games like Yu-Gi-Oh, for example, is the player base. It's never the company. The company gives y'all a lot of what y'all want, but then y'all complain that it's too much or not enough or it's not exactly what we expected. It's like or what we asked for. It's like you yeah. shouldn't be asking for anything because one, it's a hobby. It's just a game. This is just for fun. Ultimately, if you want something your way, you make your own shit. You make your own card game. Instead of complaining that, that the card game that you chose to play, you chose to put money into, has has its own system. Does things its way. I hate that Konami, for example, caters to the cries of bad players. Players that constantly complaining about the game and the products is like if they're constantly complaining <clears throat> let them complain ignore them and only focus on creating good products the way you want the products to be you know reasonable price of course reasonably price and then go that way because i do hate that booster packs are not as awesome as they used to be and the pro and then the main problem is is because of the fact that a lot of players are obsessed with the idea of shiny cards hollows hollows that Konami started creating products where you open up a pack and you have a whole bunch of hollows. Here's the thing. This is just my personal take. I don't like hollows. I like it if I was collecting the hollows, but I don't like hollows for like actually playing the game. I prefer commons. Like there's this uh, alpha beast thing, there's this eight drop um, card and they have a common version and a whole bunch of hollows. I went straight for the commons. Like, yep, that's what I need. A play set of commons. Because the hollows, when you, they, they curl up, so they make your heart to shuffle. They, they, they mess up your you know the, the way your deck looks when you have them stacked. Um, they're not good for shuffling. They're, not, they're just not good for gameplay. They warp. They scratch easy. So when they scratch, they start looking ugly with scratches on them. You don't get that, that, that those types of problems with commons. So I prefer to play commons, especially if I'm playing competitively. I prefer my cards to be common. 
not shiny. Y'all want it shiny. Y'all like to, quote unquote, bling out your deck. So, yeah, y'all pay that extra extravagant, extravagant, ridiculous price tags. I'll be fine with, if I ever do play Bonfire, three commons. So I can wait for the three commons to come out. But I'm not going to buy the, the hollow version because I don't want hollow. And I'm definitely not spending like, what, a hundred plus dollars for each copy for something that I don't really even need. It might be a good card, but I don't really need it. Shit, what I want is, 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 is a soul, soul charge. I would like that to come back. I got comments of soul charge. I would love to play my soul chargers. Do a whole bunch of wombo combo with that, right? We will, we would love that card back. But that's the thing. I have that. It's common. I got common veilers, right? I used to have common ash blossoms. Been, I've been sold them because, you know, money, right? Because I don't need the card. I don't even really use the card. But I do have the original um, uh, Maximum Crisis um, ash blossom. So I do have a one hollow version of it that I have in the top loader and stuff like that. It was given to me as a gift. So I have it. I, I just plan to sell it, you know, eventually, right? Because <laughs> I really don't play the card. But, or, or I could keep it and just have a nice little collectible and add it to my collection of hollows. But the real thing is, like, hollows are only really good for collecting if you like to be a collector. So I agree there should be a collector's market. I agree there should be a competitive market, which should mainly be, uh, you know, uh, well, you can play whatever you want. Whether it be shiny cards, expensive cards, cheap cards, whatever, you play however you want. Casual players definitely should be playing a whole bunch of commons. Um because it's cheap again it's a hobby you're playing it for fun you're playing it to pass the time unless you're playing competitively there's no need to to to, to put a lot of money into the game so that's why as casual players definitely should be budget playing you know, shouldn't be chasing meta decks and meta cards so if anyone's complaining it'd be one of two people Comp uh, casual players trying to play competitive and competitive players uh trying to play competitive but don't have the pockets for it and that's the thing i know it's a lot of people complain about how it's hard for them to play competitively or how to, or hard to play the game at all because they can't afford it it's like but you can afford the game what you're doing is, is that you're chasing the expensive stuff not the cheap stuff so that's why you can't afford it because you can't afford the, the expensive stuff but you don't need the expensive stuff to play the game or to do good at the game there's tons of people that they're still playing their Insector deck or their their Alien deck or their Madoches or Shadals or whatever cheap ass deck that they that they bought a long time ago and they probably bought it when it was reprinted so they bought it dirt cheap like for like ten bucks and they still playing it at the locals a couple you know uh, 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 Nats maybe regionals and they top and they do pretty good with the same deck that they've had for a long time that only cost them like ten twenty bucks. Why everybody else is chasing two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, three thousand dollar decks, just to end up with the same results? Still end up barely topping or topping, but you got people who are playing budget still topping. So it's like, so it's not. So the more you pay, doesn't guarantee the more, you, the better you'll do at an event. If anything, you're 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 overpaying for the same results if you pay, paid for less. A thirty dollar deck. <clears throat> can top an event just like a three thousand dollar deck can top an event so i'd rather pay 30 bucks to get the same results the problem is a lot of y'all don't think that way a lot of y'all don't even don't even play with the idea of like yeah let me make a really good competitive 30 dollar deck no to y'all it's i gotta play whatever is popular and and if the and if there's a three thousand dollar deck i gotta pay three thousand dollars for that deck like no you don't you can you can you can play something cheaper, way cheaper. All, I'm always looking for cheap stuff. Shit, I my current deck main strategy, my main main win column. The reason why I win a lot with the deck I'm playing right now is because of a common card that, that my friend pulled from a pack, and he read the card, and I'm like, wait, wait, what does that do? And that sounded amazing. I'm like, I could use that as a win con. I could win with that. I can kill somebody in one turn with that. Right? He gave it to me. To him, it was trash. To him, it was just, you know, bulk. But to me, it's like, uh, this is, this should be like a freaking secret rare. 
this should be bonfire level. This actually wins you the game. While bonfire doesn't. Bonfire just, just lets you search out something that lets you go into, into a combo to try to win the game. But this common card can win you out the game. And for the 20 plus years I've been playing this game, a lot of the my win conditions, a lot of the cards that I use to win, and a lot of cards that, that makes my deck strong are typically the common cards. It ain't really the shiny cards, the hollows. It's the common cards that makes my deck strong and powerful. So that's from my 20 plus years of experience. If I say commons are the best way to go, then that's the truth. The problem is, is that a lot of these uh, content creators tell you that you got to keep buying the shiny stuff. You got to keep buying the new set. You got to buy, you got you to gotta do the new combo. It's funny. They'll be the same ones. They'll make a video about some elaborate, degenerate, uh, seven negate combo, right? And then complain that that exists. It's like, um, didn't you just make a video promoting that combo? But then now you make another video complaining that it, that combo exists. And saying that it's bad that it exists. It's bad for the game and blah, 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 blah. Konami should, should hit some of the cards, should ban the deck, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, so funny that you promoted the deck. But now you want to trash the deck. And that's the hypocrisy that I see a lot that I don't like. Instead of... These content creators like my, you know, like myself, for example, putting out content of like, hey, y'all can play the game on a budget. Y'all can play the game with commons. Let me show you. Here's a deck that 90% of it is just commons. Commons from the new set that you can, you can easily get and build decks with. See, I remember back in the day, whenever uh, people were buying packs and booster boxes and they're all again they're all chasing the shiny card so they open up a pack trying to find the shiny card so they bypass all the commons and i'm there just looking looking at the comments like oh yeah what's that what does that do like i'm curious about what the non-shiny cards do they only care about what the shiny cards do i'm looking at the non-shiny cards and then i'm finding some really good cards that's how i find stuff like metamorphosis magical sciences right you know stuff like that uh Something as simple as a rare, like Fusilar Dragon, Cyber Jar, and the list goes on. This is the rarities of a lot of these cards back in the day. And these are really good cards. <clears throat> Messenger Peace. So, uh, let's see. Uh, Gra Gravity Bind. That's a rare. Compulse. That's a rare. When it first came out. Uh, Red Screen Common. And I've been using that for like eight, nine years or something like that. And the funny thing is what I'm playing right now is... Threatening Roar and Wabakus, and those came out common. Wabaku was originally in that in that, in that Yugi uh, st structure deck. So I'm so I'm ironically I'm using the Wabaku, not the same Wabaku from my first uh, starter deck, but I'm just saying Wabaku came in the starter deck, and I'm using Wabaku again. It's it's been 20 years, uh, over 20 years, and I'm playing Wabaku again, right? Something that I haven't played in many years, but I'm playing it. So I'm playing Wabaku, I'm playing Threatening Roar. Um, these were always good cards. There's another card, uh, Thunder Ruler, but sometimes I forget that that's a card. Um, so I could use that, so I have 12 ways to basically uh, make my opponents turn useless. Um, so, and that's my main strategy. Is like I, I put up a couple cards, I play Threatening or Wabaku, I end my turn, on their turn, boom, Wabaku or Threatening. So even if they break my board and and they, you know, they summon a whole bunch of monsters. Well, they can't kill me that turn. They gotta wait until next turn. But on my turn, break their board, right? Sphere mode or something, right? That kind of stuff. Lightning, lightning storm. So, so that's the way I'm playing, and it works great. Works great consistently. Having a lot of fun with that. And again, these are common cards, you know. Uh, my lightning storms. I think they're hollow, right? I think my lightning storms that I have are hollow. I don't think they come common yet, but once they come common, of course, I'm going to replace my hollows with the commons, <coughs> sell off the hollows so I can get some money, right, and buy some more commons. That's the thing. I'm always looking for the reprints, always looking for, that's what I'm doing right now is looking at the newer uh, reprint sets and seeing if there's any cards in there I want. Um, Zeus comes in that two-player uh, set that I heard about. People keep mentioning Zeus is in there. It's like, okay, cool. 
I can go get me a Zeus. Hopefully it's common, <laughs> right? Hopefully, ideally, fingers crossed that uh, they have a common Zeus. So I can grab it and, you know, put it into my deck. But that's the thing, I can't use Zeus in my current deck. So <clears throat> out of that two player set, that's what I would want is Zeus. Because I actually uh, can use it. Um, and Zeus used to be expensive. You know, the original. But that's why I don't buy things when they're expensive. I just wait until they're they're common and then buy it when they're common. For like nickels and dimes, literally. And that's the thing. My TCG player account has a whole bunch of uh, cards. They're like 5 cents, 10 cents, 12 cents, 14 cents. You know, that kind of stuff. I'm grabbing play sets of a whole bunch of commons. And I do this with the new card game that I'm playing. I'm looking for a whole bunch of commons in the new game. So every game, I'm always looking for the commons that are really good, that I can build decks with. And then sometimes, yeah, sometimes I got to get some shiny cards because that's the only rarity they come in. And they're really good, so I'm going to need them. But that's the thing. If, if your whole entire deck, if every card in your deck is $100 per card, then you don't need that deck. It's not that deep. I've seen some people, you know, complain about, oh, this deck is expensive because three of this, three, 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 I'm looking at it and like, you don't need all that. Just the three bonfires and then a whole bunch of commons is all you would need to, 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 to have a good engine, a good strategy, and just throw in a whole bunch of staples and, you know, and, and you're good to go. You don't need that specific build that someone else built that's expensive where every card is like 100 plus no you can just you can weather it down cheaply that's the first thing you don't need three places as a bonfire you could just get one bonfire and two other cards that work similar and if i'm right the whole idea of bonfire is to grab this one star fire monster right well one for one is a common and you can use it to bring out the one star and get it onto the field because the whole idea is that the combo is the one thing I know for sure is that you play bonfire to get the one star and the one star special summons itself because you 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 added it to the hand, but 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 one for one can put it onto the field straight from the deck onto the field, so I, so I rather just use one for one. Yes, one for one is limited to one per deck, but that just further proves that you can sub the two. Uh, another thing you can do is foolish burial. Yeah, one per you can only have one copy per deck, but that's something you can use to send it to the graveyard on purpose, and then monster reborn. Monster Born, yes, at one. But you get the point. There are other ways to try to get that card onto the field. And try to, you know, so that we can, you know, that we can do whatever combo that they're trying to do with that little one draw, one star. So that's why I think. I think I'm like, oh, if there's a cool strategy, um, but all the cards for it are expensive, then I look for alternatives. I look for like, okay, what cheaper version? For example, a lot of people like the duality card. Duality is pricey. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not interested in um, paying that much for it. I did uh, try it out in Edo Pro. So I tried out the card. I'm like, yeah, I don't I don't like the card that much. It's not that great. But ironically, I own the other card. Let me go look at it real quick. It should be here. Damn, it's down here somewhere. It's Shadow's Light. There you go. So I got the Shadow Light card instead. And I got Ready Fusion. So I got... So I bought those two things when I find out about duality. And it's like, yeah, duality's cool and all, but Shadow's Light is just as good because it the outcome is similar. Yeah, it's not a quick play. Yeah, it uh, duality is better, but this is good enough because what I'm trying to use it for, what I'm trying to bring out with it, you know, is this card is good enough, right? for you know a combo and it's cheap that's the thing it's a cheap version of duality so why not you know give it a try it's just like all those pot of desires and avarices and prosperities and all stuff there are other cards i can use that gives me a similar um effect that gives me a similar outcome and ultimately that's what you want is a similar outcome um i use the card card scanner in my runic deck it acts as a draw engine Plus a mill engine, because you know, a lot of times it causes your opponent to draw a card from the effect. Um, so it's just a really good card in the runic, because it acts as a draw engine, and then it loops with the field card. Because the field card puts cards at the bottom of your deck in any order you want, and 
card scanner lets you say spell and then add that spell at the bottom of your deck to your hand so that's how you can get uh gold for, for you know the golden droplets the runic golden droplets over and over again and keep milling your opponent for five technically six if you use the uh card scanner so six 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 right you just constantly taking six cards out of your opponent's deck and then they draw for turns so that's seven cards uh, technically so like seven cards a turn so you know it all adds up and you you know eventually mill them out so and, that, and that's just going to general because if you need a specific card you know you have control of playing the card getting the card back using it again playing the card getting it back playing it getting it back you know over and over again and then the field card just you know obviously replenishing your hands so you just have infinite resources so the ability to get your runic destruction over and over again so you can keep popping back roll is very is you know very busted getting the other card that lets you pop special summon monsters is really useful because it helps you interrupt your opponent's you know synchro link plays whatever it, whatever plays they're trying to do you can just keep popping their special summons right every turn so that is a very busted strategy so of course why not play it that way and that's the way me and my friend play our runic decks and yes i have a runic deck not the bestial runic but i have runic deck my deck is more like kaiju runic infernal tempest lava golem runic so it's that version just because it's focused more on milling you than doing some herper derp multiple negate type of combo thing i'm not against bestial runics you know hey it's a decent deck i, I like it but that's not what I'm playing. Um, I guess that'll be the end of what I was talking about.